Hey everyone, I'm back again with another video in our study series. Today, we're speaking about tetracyclines. Tetracyclines, that's what we're speaking about today. So, let's get started. Tetracyclines inhibit bacteria. They kill, they, they stop the growth of bacteria by interfering with protein synthesis. And tetracyclines are used for a variety of different infections. Um, here are just a few of them. It's used for acne, it's used for Lyme disease, and it's used for rickettsial infections. And those are infections that are caused by the bite of a tick, right? The bite of a tick. So Lyme disease is caused by a tick. So Tetracyclines are one of the class of medications that's used for Lyme disease. So now, how do we identify a tetracycline? Well, here is a memory tip for you. You will see demicycline, doxycycline, minocycline, and tetracycline. Tetracycline is not just a class, it's also a medication. But if you notice one thing about, one thing about all of these the names of all of these medications is that they end in cycline. So tetracyclines end in cycline. That's just a tip there. So tetracyclines can be given intravenously or they can also be given orally. Orally, they're available as tablets, they're available as extended release, and they're also available um, as liquid medication. So with the liquid medication, there's a few things. Use the measuring device that the pharmacy gives to you. Store the medication properly. We have to teach our client to make sure that they store the medication properly because if tetracycline liquid is not stored properly and it goes bad and your client takes it, um, it can really, really, really affect their kidneys. So storage is important. And when we're taking li liquid tetracycline, we want to tell our clients to use a straw. Use a straw with the liquid, all right? So side effects of tetracycline, GI disturbance. We discussed this before with other classes of medication. Anything that's given orally has the ability to cause GI disturbance. So GI disturbance, nausea, vomiting, anorexia, diarrhea, those are all GI effects of medication. With tetracyclines, we have photosensitivity, nephrotoxicity, and hepa hepatotoxicity. And we're going to go into each of these side effects in a little detail. Now, if you're getting some value from this study session, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss another video from me. So moving on, photosensitivity. Photosensitivity means that the client is sensitive to sunlight. They're sensitive to sunlight. So it's very easy for this person to get a sunburn or a rash or something like that on their skin. So we have to be very mindful with this. So we're gonna tell our clients to avoid sun exposure, avoid sun exposure. But there are some instances where your client may have to go outside. So if they do have to go outside, there are some precautions that we should teach them to take right? We should teach them to take some precautions. And those precautions are they should wear protective clothing when they go outside. They should cover their arms and their legs. They should use a wide brim hat to cuff to protect their face and their neck. They should wear sunglasses, right? They can use an umbrella to protect them from the sun. And they should use sunscreen. But guys, one tip here. 
if they are allergic to sunscreen, they need to speak to the healthcare provider regarding their sun protection. So we want our clients to avoid sun exposure with photosensitivity. Now, what else do we want to do? We want to tell them they need to avoid tanning beds and tanning lamps. So we want our client to avoid the tanning salon during this time while they're on a tetracycline, right? Because remember, their skin is already sensitive. All right. Nephrotoxicity. We do not want to give a tetracycline to, to a client that has that already has problem with their kidneys. We don't want to give it to someone that has problems with their kidneys. So we're going to monitor your client's kidney function. We're going to monitor labs, BUN and creatinine. And in the labs, what we're looking for is an increase in BUN and creatinine. Is the BUN and creatinine going up? That's what we're going to be looking for. Urine output. Urine output, we're looking for a decrease. Decrease in urine output because urine output less than 30 mLs per hour means our client kidneys are in trouble, okay? So increase in BUN and creatinine and decrease in urine output are what we're looking for. Hepatotoxicity. We're going to monitor our client's liver enzyme, but also we're not going to give this to someone who already has problems with their liver. We're not going to give it to someone who already has problems with their liver. So we're going to monitor their liver enzymes. We're going to monitor the AST and ALT values, and we're looking for an increase in AST and ALT values. Your client has an infection, they might get a fever, right? How are we treating the fever? Are we using acetaminophen? Let's be mindful. Acetaminophen also affects our liver. So be careful when it comes to the hepatotoxicity and, and what we're giving to the client and what affects the client's liver. Some other notes I have here on tetracycline. It's a penicillin cephalosporin alternative, meaning if you're allergic to penicillin or cephalosporin, you can take a tetracycline as an alternative. We wanna take tetracycline on an empty stomach because food delays and decreases absorption of tetracyclines. Tetracycline should be taken one hour or two to three hours after a meal with a full glass of water. And we want to avoid taking tetracycline with milk or other milk dairy products at the same time. We also want to avoid antacids, calcium, iron supplements within one to three hours of tetracycline. So if we have clients that are taking these medications, we want to space it out away from the administration time of the tetracycline. Tetracycline interacts with warfarin. It increases the effect of warfarin. Keep in mind what happens when you increase effect of warfarin. Tetracycline decreased effectiveness of oral contraceptives. Tetracycline also should be avoided with digoxin because it increases digitalis levels. So we want to avoid it with digoxin. Tetracycline cross, crosses the placenta. We want to avoid it. We should not use it in pregnant clients right? We also don't want to use it with 
breastfeeding clients. We also don't want to give tetracycline to children under the age of eight because in each of these circumstances, it will cause tooth discoloration. It will turn the tooth into a funny, yellow, blackish color, and that's permanent. So we want to avoid tetracycline in pregnant women, breastfeeding women, and children under the age of eight. These are the people that we should not be given tetracycline to. Client teaching for tetracycline, take the medication at the prescribed time interval. Why? Because we want to have a therapeutic amount of the medication in the body at all times so it can fight the infection and help the client to get better. We want to teach our client to finish the medication completely, even if they're feeling better, because sometimes the client might be feeling better and they figure, well, oh, mm, I can stop taking the medication now because I don't feel sick anymore. But they need to be encouraged to complete the medication because even though they're feeling better, it doesn't mean all the bacteria is gone. There may still be bacteria left in their system. So we want to encourage our client, finish all of your medication. We want to advise our client to use sunscreen and protective clothing to prevent photosensitivity reactions. We want to teach client to use an additional form of contraception. And we want to have them do this until the next menstrual cycle. So they're going to keep using this additional form, this alternate form of construction until the next month, until the period comes again. We want to teach to our client to not treat fever with diarrhea or diarrhea with fever at home. We need them to consult the healthcare pro professional because especially if this tool has blood plus and mucus in it, it could be an adverse reaction. And we need that to be evaluated by a healthcare provider because the client may need additional treatment for this diarrhea. We want to teach client not to lie down after taking tetracyclines. And we also want to teach them not to take the medication at night. Um, you know, especially if it's right before their bedtime, because if you lie down and take tetracycline, it can cause esophageal ulceration. It can irritate your esophagus. And that's something that we don't really want our clients to experience. So we will let them know, do not lie down after taking it and don't take it late at night before bedtime. Okay. So guys, that's all the notes that I have for you today. I hope you've enjoyed studying with me. Um, I'll be back again with another study session. Until then, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss another video from me. And take care, be well, bye-bye.